Today I'm gonna to show you how to actually feel your stubborn glutes that won't turn on during hip thrusters, hip bridges, or really any kind of glute exercise. What's going on everybody, how you doing? It's Blake Bowman here with Gorilla Zen Fitness. Today I'm gonna to talk about the glutes, more specifically why you can't feel them when you're doing things like hip bridges and hip thrusters, and instead of feeling the glutes, you're feeling many other different areas of the body work. To begin, the gluteus maximus is the biggest of all of your glute muscles, all right? And it's responsible for a lot of different things. Because it's the biggest muscle, it primarily is what gives the biggest, you know, shape to your glutes. This muscle helps to stabilize the hips, the lower back, and the knees. This muscle is the primary muscle that extends your hip, which means take your leg back behind you like this, okay? Uh, hip extension, you're doing that every time you're walking, when you come up from the bottom of a, of a squat, so on and so forth. The gluteus maximus is also a really important postural muscle that not a lot of people equate to having good posture. One of the best ways to work the gluteus maximus is to do hip extension exercises like hip thrusters or hip bridges, where you basically thrust your hips upwards towards the ceiling and you squeeze and contract the glute muscle fibers at the top of this motion. However, if you're like a lot of people, you might not feel this motion in the glutes. You might feel your lower back working. You might feel your thighs working. You might even feel your calves working all instead of your glutes. This is what today's video is all about. In a second here, I'm gonna show you the top four things that you're probably doing wrong or having going wrong with your body that are basically causing your glutes to not be able to contract and turn on, instead turning on all these other areas. One of the most common things that I see going on with my online coaching clients is when they perform hip thrusters or hip bridges, all right, what they feel firing and contracting the hardest is not the glutes, but the hamstrings, all right? Now, there's something really important that I want you to know. When you're extending the hip, which again is when you take your leg back behind you, which is what we're doing in this motion, all right? The gluteus maximus is the prime mover, the muscle that should be doing the majority of the work. The hamstrings are supposed to work during hip extension as well, but they are synergist muscles to the gluteus maximus, meaning they're supposed to help the glutes out, all right? They're not supposed to do all of the work for the glutes uh, and overpower and dominate them, but that's exactly what happens if you have synergistic dominance of the hamstrings going on, all right? Like the title implies, in this scenario, the hamstrings, which are synergists to the glutes, they dominate the glutes. They're synergistically dominant, all right? In this case, the muscles, like the hamstrings, which are just supposed to be assisting the glutes, helping them out, they're simply overpowering them. They're contracting uh, much harder than the glutes are themselves. This is a big issue because it typically keeps compounding on itself over time. As your hamstrings get thicker and tighter and more overactive, the glutes atrophy and get you know, smaller and uh, you know, harder to actually turn on and squeeze, all right? So we do want the hamstrings to be working in tandem with the glutes during a hip thrust motion but you should strive for like 90-10, 90% of the contraction, the squeezing, to occur in the, the glutes and only about 10% or so to occur in the hamstrings, all right? Now, you may be wondering, well, that's great to know conceptually, but what can I do about that? Well, I'll show you right now. <laughs> so this is not a bench, but you don't need a bench. You can simply use something like a, uh, this, which is a, uh, you know, Chair, this is actually meant for doing, you know, headstands. You can use a bench, you can use a hard chair. It doesn't really matter. What you're gonna do though, in between sets of hip thrusters or hip bridges, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a ball, all right? This is just kind of a, a hard ball. You, want, you can use a softball that you would like play softball with. Uh, you want it to be a little bit bigger in diameter than a lacrosse ball is though, okay? so. Kind of a fat, hard ball, a supernova from Rogue Fitness would work, as would just a regular softball. What you're gonna do with this thing is you're gonna take it, place it underneath the high hamstring, okay? Right about there, right underneath your butt bone. You're gonna push down with your leg, so there's a lot of pressure sinking into the hamstring with that ball. And then you're just gonna extend and flex your knee like this a bunch of times, all right? 
What we're doing here, and then you're gonna move down a little bit lower down the hamstring, kind of get the middle fibers, all right? What this is doing, this is a type of self-massage on the hamstrings, self-myofascial release, all right? By releasing the hamstrings, we are shutting down the neurological drive going into them, telling them to turn on and contract, all right? So in essence, what we're doing is we're weakening them, all right? We are inhibiting the hamstrings by doing interset, which means in between sets, self-myofascial release of the hamstrings, all right? What this will do is it'll shut down the hamstrings, make them less prone to turn on and contract. Like I said, it'll weaken them a little bit, which you want to do strategically in between sets of hip thrusters or hip bridges if you have this going, down, going on. Having more shut off hamstrings will create a window of opportunity for the glutes to actually turn back on, start to reawaken and fire again, all right? So the key with this is to do interset self-myofascial release, in between sets. If you just do this once at the beginning of, let's say, four or five sets of hip thrusters, it might help you feel the glutes you know, during that first set, but then the dominance of the hamstrings is really gonna start to kick back on uh, you know, halfway through your second set, so on and so forth, all right? So it's very important that you shut the hamstrings down over and over and over again in between sets while you're resting uh, on each side that this is going on for, all right? So, you know, approximately 30 seconds on this side, 30 seconds on this side, do another set of hip thrusters, 30 seconds on this side, 30 seconds on this side, another set of hip thrusters, so on and so forth. If you want, you can actually stack another exercise onto that to do in between sets of hip thrusters, which is just a hamstring nerve glide, all right? I've showed this in previous videos. Basically, lay back, grab, you know, extend one knee up in the air, grab behind the knee to support it, and then just kind of roll the ankle around like this. This will also help to loosen up the hamstrings and shut down that neurological drive going into them, right? So if you want, you can stack this in with it, or you can just stack a static or a dynamic hamstring stretch and do that in between sets as well. The whole idea here is we are inhibiting and shutting down the hamstrings if they are overactive and synergistic, synergistically dominant over the glutes so that the glutes can actually turn on and start to do their job again. Another thing that is very, very common it, during hip thrusters is to feel kind of the quads or the, the hips working uh, too much, right? Feeling it here, not feeling the glutes, okay? What is likely happening here is you just simply have too much tightness of the hip flexors, all right? The TFL, psoas, and the rectus femoris, which runs right down the center of your quadricep, all right? What you need to know about the hip flexors is they are antagonist muscles to the gluteus maximus, meaning they do the exact opposite, all right? These muscles here in this region, they flex the hip. That is this. That's hip flexion, all right? Uh, the glutes, the gluteus maximus, like I said, they extend the leg back behind you like that, all right? So, you know, hip extension is this motion of the hip, right? Taking the leg back behind you. Uh, when you're seated all day, your hips are in a flexed position. That causes these muscles to become short and tight. The more short and tight you are in the hip flexors, the more that's going to inhibit and kind of shut down the gluteus maximus, all right? So if you're feeling the hip flexors work a lot and you're not feeling the glutes, this is probably due to overactivity and tightness here. Maybe because of the tightness here, you're missing hip extension a little bit. And all that we really need to do to address this is foam roll the, you know, the quads and the hip flexors and then follow that by stretching. The TFL, which is a kind of a muscle at 45 degrees off to the hip here, it's very easy to foam roll as is the rectus femoris, which is just right down the quad, all right? To roll out the TFL, put your hip down kind of at a 45 degree angle here, and just roll back about 12 times on that TFL muscle. From there, angle the hips down at the ground and roll the center of your quad out, uh, same way, about 12 times, okay? Do this on both sides, and yeah, that's really effective to kind of loosen up the TFL and the rectus femoris muscle fibers. What you wanna do following that 
is a classic hip flexor stretch, all right? Which will also help to restore the extension of the hip, okay? Get set up like this, tuck the pelvis underneath you, like if you were wearing a belt buckle, try to tilt it up towards your face, squeeze the glute on that side, shift the hips forwards, keeping this glute squeeze really, really tight, keeping your core squeeze really, really tight as well. And just hold this for about 30 to 45 seconds, all right? Stacking the foam rolling of the TFL and the rectus femoris with that stretch, doing that prior to your sets of hip thrusters or hip bridges should really help to facilitate more glute activation, all right? Um, which is your capacity to squeeze the glutes, all right? Similar to the first one that I showed you, if this helps initially, but then you kind of feel these muscles taking over again, go ahead and do this one multiple times in between sets, just like the first one that I showed you. All right, moving on to number three here. Let's say you're feeling this in your lower back. Oftentimes, if you're feeling the lower back work during hip thrusters, almost 100% what you're doing is you're extending the lumbar spine and tilting the pelvis forwards. In other words, you're arching your low back during this motion, all right? So you're likely kind of, I'm just gonna pull my shirt up here so you can see, you're likely tilted forwards like this really tilting everything forwards, arching that low back as you're pushing the hips up, okay? Don't do that, all right? When you're doing a hip thruster, if you really want to feel the glutes working, posteriorly tilt the hips. Again, if you're wearing a belt buckle, try to like pretend like you're tilting that belt buckle up towards your face, all right? Like that with the pelvis. That will flatten out the lower back, and then when you do the hip thrust, you're gonna feel this a lot more in your glutes, all right? How high you're gonna be able to go up with your hips is going to be limited, but that doesn't mean anything with regards to this exercise. It's not how high up your hips are going, it's how much contraction of your glutes you're getting, okay? So yes, you'll probably be able to go maybe half as high as you were if you were tilting the pelvis forwards, but now you should not feel this in your lower back, and the glutes will be the muscle fibers that you're actually feeling work. As a bonus, you might find that you are feeling some other muscles working instead of the glutes today that I did not talk about, all right? Keep in mind what I showed you in you know, technique number one when we're addressing the synergistic dominance of the hamstrings, the interset self-myofascial release, you can actually use that all over the body, all right? If you're feeling something work that is not something that we discussed today and is also not your glutes during the hip thrusters, go ahead and do that interset rolling shut down that muscle, whatever it may be, in between sets as well. That's a pretty good strategy and something that you can rarely go wrong with. That's it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed this. If you have and you're not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you go ahead and do that. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of content there that you will not see here. Uh, that's really exclusive to over there. I do live Q and A's and a bunch of stuff that, like I said, you just won't see me post here. If you did enjoy this video and you want to go a little bit deeper with me, then you're probably really going to like my free workout called the three day functional training split. This is a free workout plan designed to get you stronger and leaner while correcting common muscle imbalances and postural misalignments. All right. So it's available for free on my website. It's basically a strength training plan that integrates corrective exercise into it. All right. If you want to get this, just open up the description down below. Click the first link available there. That will take you over to my website. As soon as you land on my website, I'll ask you for your email. Once you enter that in, I'll send you a copy of this workout within five minutes. If you're looking for another spot to get that free workout plan, you can go ahead and click this button up there. Like I said earlier too, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, make sure you go ahead and do that. I upload here every week. You can do that over there. And if you wanna see another video similar to this one, then check this out over here. That's it for today. Let me know what you want me to make videos on in the future in the comments down below, and we'll see you next time.